Hey everybody, Greg here at the Joy of Aquascape, and I hope you're doing well. I'm sorry if there's a bit of background noise. There's an absolute storm blowing out here now at the moment. It's been crazy for, for the last couple of weeks. It's just been bonkers. There's been storm after storm after storm. I think they're probably running out of names for storms at this stage. It's been crazy, and it's really held things up a little bit for me. I haven't been able to do much outside with the ponds. I've just been concentrating on keeping them kind of all the fish safe and making sure everything is set up and okay. It's been really cold as well on top of that. Everything has just been blown around like crazy here. There's been trees coming down. It's just been crazy. So haven't been able to do tons and it's helped with the vlog as well. My apologies for that too. Definitely be getting back on that this week, regardless of what way the weather is. But I haven't been idle. I've been keeping busy. I've been 3D printing tons of fish stuff this week. Of course, it's been fish stuff. What else would it be? I'm going to give you a quick look at what I've been working on, what I've been modeling, what I've been printing here for the last couple of weeks. Now I've been 3D printing for the last couple of years. I have an Ender 3 Pro. It's a pretty base model, just filament FDM printer. And it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. You can do tons of stuff with them. I've used it for lots of different things. I've made a bird feeders for outside and little, um, <laughs> it's awesome. I've got Chrissy as a little Robin who lands on my window. She keeps me constantly entertained while I'm working in my office. She's absolutely awesome. But I printed out tons of stuff bits for my radio control car and bits and pieces for around the house different sorts of holders for controllers and all sorts of stuff you can you you can do a lot with 3d printers they're absolutely awesome but you can do stuff like printing out models and stuff with them which is super cool super fun the type of print that i have is not necessarily the best type of printer for printing out models you can absolutely fine but it suits some models better than other but what i've been working on specifically course fish related stuff not things for aquariums or anything like that or bits and pieces or tools and stuff because they're available online you can download those and print those off i wanted to do some actual fish i wanted to model up some fish and print them off so i found a little piece of software called nomad sculpt and that thing is awesome you can download it on your phone or on your tablet and there's no sponsorships in this channel guys and just this is just stuff that i've been using and i just wanted to give you a little bit of information about because i think it's absolutely awesome if you can't have a fish you can just you can model it and 3d print it and then you have the fish it's awesome so i started off with goldfish and i had to i had to model batman that big giant lumpy boy of a fish he's absolutely awesome he's my main fish and i needed to model him up so the first thing i done was i modeled up his little head and well, we 3D printed it out, and if we take a look at it here, you can see... Well, I've been doing a little bit of sanding on this. That's the grey areas, because it's black film, and we can see his little mouth, and his little eyes, the lumpy head. It was, you know, I just done a quick test, and I was like, that's okay, that's that's fine. I held it up inside his head, and I was like, it's not big enough. So, we went bigger. Of course we went bigger. And, uh, yeah, things started to go in the right direction. We got this big, lumpy boy here. And you can see, Jer, just put a bit of gloss paint in it, just um, just doing some testing. This is like really thin walls and stuff, pretty pretty much hollow. Um, yeah, gave it a bit of a test. I thought that would, you know, it was a bit of fun. Big lumpy boy. Um, except it wasn't big enough. Of course it wasn't big enough. He's a giant fish, we had to go big. So we did. <laughs> this thing is nearly the size of my head. This is ridiculous, uh, but I love it. You can see I've been doing some sand on them. I want to get them nice and smooth. Because you do get lines in these. They do print line by line. This was printed this way. You can see there's a flat end. That, that was the bit that was on the bottom. So I'm going to be able to wall mount this, which I think is going to be super fun. It's a little Batman bust. But it's printed line by line by line by your 3D printer. I'll give you a look at what that looks like as well. But um, I did have a little bit of an issue on this one where you can see there's a particular bit all the way around here. Only for that, I probably would have left it, the, the nice shiny plastic, because I had a, a bit of a layer shift uh, where the base of it got bumped and the next line printed out in a different spot. And that needed to be fixed. Not something that's going to happen on every print. Bumped into the printer, it can happen. And it's all well and good doing like just a head or a bus or something but of course i wanted to do the full fish so i modeled that out on the software and i done the full batman body fins tails and it started to look like the real deal he started to look like the real fish and pretty happy with it but the problem is like i was saying this printer prints out in lines a layer at a time and it's not really designed to be able to deal with the type of modeling that i wanted it to do this goldfish print is just it's not ideal. You're going to have to put tons of support in. you got some tin parts with the fins. And 
you're gonna have lines and really difficult to work with so i just said you know what I, i'm gonna hold off on this and um, i gonna des i designed up a bunch of goldfish i got a, a big chunky ryukin and um, which are printed i'll show you him later and um, my telescope mirror and i've done a video on how i created the telescope mirror i'll link that actually uh, there for you if you want to see how i modeled it and that's just a bit of a time lapse on modeling it where i talk about like the development of a telescope where you can see an overview of the software and how it works and how i kind of quickly put together and um, the fish but then i was like right these are difficult to do on this machine so i'll get a resin printer and um, so i can model these properly and um, and that's something that i'm hoping to get quite soon that's going to be able to 3d print them um, and get the detail in that I want. And I can add back in a lot of the detail that I actually got rid of because I wasn't able to print it out and it was just causing trouble. Um, and that was a bit of a waste. So I got to get a resin 3D printer. It's going to allow me to print off all those super fine details. That's different. It doesn't print like hard plastic melted. It prints liquid plastic. And basically it just, it uses UV light to cure the resin. And it's a whole different process. We won't get into it too much or anything. But it, it allows you to achieve super fine detail, the sort of detail that you can't really get. And it's what most people who print off like miniatures and models and stuff like that are going to use because, well, it's the printer designed to get you the really accurate results with that. So we'll go back to Goldfish. But don't worry, we're going to come back to Goldfish. Goldfish are kind of my bag. But in the meantime, I wanted to look at the options that I could print. And one thing that really stood out to me was Discus because... They don't have an awful lot of the features that was were going to be difficult to print off with goldfish. So of course I had to jump in and model up my discus Nick Fury and 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 and, and get a model done of this so I had something to print. So I'm going to show you what that looks like in the modeling software now. So Nomad Sculpt is the software that we're using and this thing is absolutely awesome. I'm just I am using this on my phone. Get it on the tablet as well, and um, I did use it on the tablet a bit, but I was EFO 3, and there's a nice big screen on it and a pen, so it is super easy to do these models on it once you kind of get stuck in and learn the basic tools. And um, Basically, whenever you're doing it, you start off with um, one object, whether it's a sphere, rectangle, there's a bunch of different objects, and basically I started off with the, just with a sphere, shaped it all it all out pushed and molded and created a shape added some extra items to make the fins and um yeah that's what we have there now that's a whole video in itself i have a video um of me doing a telescope mirror here i'll link it here in uh, on screen at the moment so that is a little bit more about how i put it together but this is the model and when you want to create uh, uh, like a 3d print what you have to do is you have to export this as an stl file and if you export an stl file that's a file that's readable in the slicing software and to slice it we're going to move over to cura and that's where we're going to be creating our printable model because at the moment this we can we can change loads of stuff about it the lighting we could paint this we could make this look like a proper like fully rendered 3d picture but that's not what we're doing stl file into cura and let's get slicing this thing so our printer knows what to do with it and where to put down all of the plastic because that's exactly what we need to tell it so this is cura and this is our slicing software and i've got this loaded up and it looks like the discus from earlier on in our modeling software and basically what i'm going to do with this one is i'm going to tell it what size i want it to be so i can change the size we can make that bigger or smaller and let's just make it a little bit smaller change our size down too and let's scale it up massively here because it didn't understand which um, measurements were being used but that's okay so let's go 5000 and it'll scale those all uniformly and that'd be pretty small and we can move that about a bit as well let's bring it a little bit forward and a little bit over here now if i was to try and print that standing up like that that's gonna fall over so i can add things like supports and i can change how much fill i have in it do i want it to be completely solid we can change the angles on this there's a lot that we can do with this so 
I'm gonna do a little bit with that. Let's get that set up so that it would be printed. That'll just take me a second. I won't get into a, like a full tutorial on this because uh, <laughs> that that is a totally different video, and I'm not the guy for that either at the moment. But um, I have a little, I have got a little profile that I'm using on this one. It's working really well. So I'm gonna get that set up, and I'll show you what it looks like before it prints. Okay, we're done, and it's saying three hours and five minutes because this is a pretty, this is a pretty small model. Now, if we go up to prepare. Or into preview, I should say. We can see things change quite a bit. And this is very different from what we were just looking at. All that blue stuff there is support. Because if I was to try and print the fins out, they'd be trying to print in midair. And it would just turn into a stringy mess. And it wouldn't print out properly at all. That would be a nightmare. So all this stuff here is just extra material. Which is kind of hollow and it gets built up. And I have this as a tree support. Because I found it... It just provides an awful mo lot more material on the base because the big problem I was finding was because this is so thin, it just wants to fall over. So this gives it a big wide base and allows me to print this pretty tall, pretty slim model without it risking of falling over. So yeah, that this is kind of what I've been doing and with the sentence we can change the, the lines and stuff so that there's... Um, there's different types of infill and remember this is printing one line at a time and we can see that happening we can view how it happens we can see here all that orange stuff that's infill that just helps support the inside of it the green lines are the inner walls and the red line is the outer wall and we can see the fins are only like two walls thick this is a very small model this is smaller than the stuff i have been printing but I just wanted to run this to show you. And we can see that it's pretty cool. The way we can see it grow. And that's what we'd expect to have after about three hours. So let's take a look at a couple of the prints that I've done. And this first one turned out pretty rough. I'm not going to lie. We can see this guy here is a big... Got a wound. Just, <laughs> just here. So basically, he, I printed it in two parts. Top part and the bottom part. So the top part took a bit over two hours, bottom part took about an hour and a half, so about four hours total. And um, there's no infill, it's just basically the walls of it pretty much. Um, and I glued them together. Now a little bit of warping meant that they didn't completely stick perfectly. That's okay, you can fix that. That's not the end of the world and I did that in the next model. But what was a real problem, I see all these little gaps, these little, all these lines where there's no plastic. That's called under extrusion. There's a couple of reasons why that can happen, but it makes things weak, and obviously gives a poor finish. Because you've lost a bit of tail here, it, it it'll break really easily. It shouldn't break that easily. It should be stronger than that. And um, the fins are stronger than the tail, but yeah, you can kind of hear a little bit of cracking there. Not not great. So I went in, and and look, there's a couple of reasons why you can have that under extrusion. And why it wasn't printing properly. Actually, there's a bunch of reasons why that can happen. We're not going to get in depth into that now. But needless to say, it it meant um, stripping the whole printer apart and just putting it back together again, tightening up everything, making sure everything was super clean and tidy. And that really did help alle alleviate a lot of the problems. Got me to a point where I got this guy. Um, now, we've got a couple of steps ahead with this. I know, I couldn't help it either. I like to jump ahead with these things. But I wanted to prove a concept and I wanted to make sure that it was something that was working out all right. Let me see here. This boy's got some shine on him. Big time here. And the reason for that is, I did give it a little bit of a lick of sandpaper and obviously give it a lick of some of my paints as well. Now, it's just a quick model. I just wanted proof of concept. Just make sure it's working. Are all the lines gone? No, not perfectly. We still have some. And that was something that was kind of annoying me. And this was another two-part print. Um, I had to glue them together. And I had to fill in the little line. And I had to do a couple of bits. And it was a bit. It was a lot of work, actually, to get it to this point. That didn't need to be. All of the work went into just finishing it and getting those, getting rid of that big seam. That was the main thing. And um, I thought to myself, you know, this is awesome. I'm, I'm happy with this. But I think... You know, I know I can do better than this. Because you can't get better quality 3D prints out of this machine. So I went ahead and I've done a little bit of a slice. 
and changed everything and I got this guy, which I have to say, I'm really happy with. Now, I bumped into the printer just here, so we have a line, um, because I was doing a little bit of work, and again, this is just a test print, but look how shiny this boy is. I did give it a lick of 601,000, um, so that nearly has it, like, it's just the case of kind of polishing the surface now. Uh, this is what it looks like after just 600, it's, it's just, it's a little bit duller. Um, maybe about 15 minutes sanding on this to get it to the point where it is. If I give it another 10 or 15 minutes, it'd be, it'd be pretty much good to go as is. I could get this polished up. But uh, I do want to get this uh, painted. Now, I'll be honest with you. Um, there was one tiny line that I would have cleared off it. And it, I could have just had it absolutely perfect. And it was actually pretty cool than just the, the blue color that it was. Um, and there are some filaments that you can get that are absolutely awesome. And this printed out in a colored filament... I know it's going to look great, so I'm definitely going to get some of the silk colored uh, filaments and some of the metallic ones. They're awesome. This is going to look great. Uh, but this guy, I have to say, I am I am enjoying this guy. He is super tough. Like, I can give his fins a good squeeze, and there's, there's nothing happening. Now, he does have two little tiny fins top and bottom that I will glue on afterwards. I left them off on doing all the sanding because uh, I'm going to break them while I'm sanding for sure. That finish... That super smooth part, that's kind of like what you get on a resin printer. So that's why I'm going to get the resin printer. But I'm going to do a couple more of these. I'm doing a huge one now at the moment. It's a, it's a two-day print. So that's that's serious. Um, it's, it's a bit of a monster. And you can see here, like, the way it's printing, it's going to print different parts at different speeds. Um, the outer layer I have designed to go really slowly. And I want that one to be as smooth as possible. There have been a couple of little issues with the print. Uh, I think it's there. The temperature at the moment here is super cold, and um, so I I think that there have been a couple of little issues. The ambient temperature isn't where I'd like it to be, but it's no problem. This is kind of another test print. So yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna continue painting these in this video. I'm gonna do that um, after. And if you're interested in that, let me know. That's that's a whole other process. Uh, let me know if you're interested in the comments. Um, I'm gonna probably put a couple available up on the website for a bit of fun. And I, I think like my plan with the discus was to do like the whole discus family tree. If you keep discus, you know discus. You know they come in all these different amazing color varieties. So I think I'm gonna do like a bunch of them. I'll make a mount and. And maybe put them in like one of those really huge frames and just and do all of the different color options. I'll get them. I'll pull out the sprayer for that and really do a nice job of them. And I think that'll look really good. Let me know what you think. And um, I'm going to make little ones and big ones and giant ones and all sorts of different ones. Until that resin printer comes along. And then I'm going to get stuck back into the goldfish. So if you're interested in seeing that, definitely let me know. Follow. I am on Instagram and I'm on TikTok. I do a lot of lives on, in, on TikTok. But I'm going to start migrating those a little bit over here. Let me know if you're interested in seeing lives here on YouTube. I think maybe every week it'll be a bit of fun. Do some lives from around the ponds. Hopefully the weather clear up a little bit as well. That'd be nice. That would be very desirable, actually. Um, because it's it's cold. Not going to lie. It's, it's freezing out there. Um, per craters in the pond, in the in-ground pond, they're, they're not doing a whole lot. And I'm going to be doing a video on them soon as well. Probably get that up later this week. An update on the single tail Arandas. But yeah, guys, if you want to support the channel, you can just like this video, subscribe, hit the bell icon, all that good stuff. YouTube loves all that stuff, and it, it definitely does help the channel. And we're going to be doing lots on this channel this year. This is going to be like my prime focus. I was TikTok quite a bit last year, but this year, I definitely think YouTube is... I'm enjoying it. I'm, I I spend a lot of time on YouTube. I'm, I do exactly what you're doing right now. I, I watch videos on YouTube. I enjoy it. So I think I'm going to spend a bit more time doing that. It gives me a little bit more time to get more in-depth with subjects. And let me know if there's any particular fish-related stuff that you're interested in in the comments too. But that's it, guys. 3D printed fish. I love them. Let me know what you think. I'll talk to you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.